Hey there, potatoes. It's been a hot minute, but I'm back. Today, we're gonna graduate from drawing stick figures, and we're gonna go ahead and make a house to put them in. Hey everybody, Walrus here from Walrus Street, bringing you part three of my Charting for Potatoes series. So far in this series, we have covered SMAs in detail with both short and long-term SMAs. Today, we're gonna be looking at the RSI. Now, the RSI is a great tool to pair with your price action and your SMAs. If you're new to this series, this is a series designed specifically for beginners. My goal with this series is to get people who are new to investing to be able to take a look at a chart and not just be confused Used and disheartened by what they're seeing. Now, this isn't meant to cover every single trading pattern. There's entire textbooks devoted to RSI. I just want to hit the principles and the main points here. So if you're a seasoned TA trader, this isn't the video for you. For everybody else, follow along. Like I said, we're going to be talking about the RSI today, the Relative Strength Index. What's important to note is that this is a momentum oscillator. With the SMAs, the moving averages, they're all backward looking. And while the RSI is technically still backward looking, because it's dealing with momentum, typically there's a small window where the RSI can almost be predictive. Almost. Especially when used in conjunction with some other indicators. The RSI is a lot of time used to tell us when there's going to be a reversal on a pattern. When a stock is becoming too oversold or too overbought, the RSI could be used to help us figure out when that reversal is going to happen, which is a bit of a predictive factor. What is an RSI? It charts the magnitude of past and current price changes of a security over a set period and indicates strength or weakness. Now I'm just using the term security in this because you can use an RSI for really anything. You can use an RSI for equities, stocks, bonds. You could use it for total markets. You could use it for cryptocurrency. So I'm not using stock. Instead, I'm going to be using security in this presentation. It's been one of the most popular trading momentum oscillators since it was published in 1978 by J. Wellis Wilder. Wilder is actually, I guess, the father, or at least he's credited as being the father of one of my favorite investing quotes of all time. Letting your emotions override your plan or system is the biggest cause of failure. I talk about this in my other videos. You know, if you're invested in something and the price tanks, you have to take a look at your analysis and you have to think, did your original investment thesis change? If it changed, consider selling your position. If it didn't, hold your position. That's because you're trying to keep emotions out of it. It's tough when the market's red, when your stock price goes down, you want to just sell, get the heck out of there. You want to do something, but it's best to detach your emotions from trading. And Wilder was a big proponent of that using TA to detach emotions. This set period that we're talking about with the RSI here, is typically 14 days. There are seven day RSIs, but they're a little less smooth. They're a little choppier. They're a little more prone to false signals. So people tend to use 14. Also, there are like 21 day RSIs, but they have the opposite problem where they're a little too smooth and you end up missing trading indicators with them. So 14 is kind of like the happy medium. And again, this is trading days, not calendar days. So this isn't two weeks. This is actually almost three. Now the RSI signals investors when a security is oversold, you consider buying. When a security is overbought, you consider selling. When the graph on the RSI chart drops below a certain point, it's considered oversold and there's likely to be a reversal the other way. So that's a good buying opportunity. Likewise, when it goes to the top of the chart, it's overbought and there's likely to be a reversal and it's a good selling opportunity. These depend heavily on external market conditions like an overall bull and bear market. You know, basically since the great financial collapse in 2009, shortly thereafter, we've been in a protracted bull market. So you've actually seen RSI's trading at the top end of their levels. Now, what do the numbers on the RSI charts mean? Most RSI charts have five horizontal lines. They're coming off the y-axis moving horizontally. There's an upper and lower boundary line at zero and 100. These establish the RSI range, zero to 100. You can't have an RSI above below that point. Now, there's usually signal lines at 30 and 70. 30 indicates oversold. It's a low number, so oversold. 70 is a high number, so overbought. Depending on market conditions and individual security conditions, these numbers might be 20 and 80 or even 10 and 90. Typically, it's 30 and 70, though. That's the most common one that you see. Also, 30 and 70, those were the ones that the OG Wilder used in his textbook for the RSI levels. These are mostly used for sensitivity refinement during overall bullish bearish conditions or strong uptrends or downtrends. Imagine if you have a stock that's constantly 
constantly trading above the 70 and overbought territory, but it's not really moving, you might want to use a more refined level and move that 70 up to 80, up to 90 to get a better signal of when there's going to be a reversal. On the x-axis, as like always, we have time. And typically it's expressed in days because the RSI calculation uses days. I made some amazingly beautiful art. This took me like five minutes in MS Paint, five stars. So here's an RSI chart, a blank one with no figures. On the y-axis, we have our level and the level is going to be our 30, 50, 70, 100. Like I said before, we could swap out the 30 and 70 with 20 and an 80. So we'd have 20, we'd have 80, or we could go to like a 10 and a 90, but this is the most common setup. On the x-axis, we have trade days. Typically on RSI charts, the midpoint, the 50 level is indicated with a dotted line. Now you're wondering, how is the RSI calculated? So the RSI is calculated with a two factor formula. Part one is going to be taking into account the average gain, the average loss, Part two is going to be averaging those averages to kind of smoothen the line. If you're really, really interested, you could pause the video right now and take a look at the formulas yourself, but I'm just letting you know it is two parts and there is an effort made to smoothen the line. Let's forget about the calculations. That's, that's too much. Let's look at this from a fundamental standpoint. So what are the basics here? Wilder's three principles. This is it. This is like the Bible of RSIs. The level of the RSI indicates the stock's recent strength in trading. So the level that would be the number of your RSI. If you have an RSI of 55, that's the level. The RSI slope is directly proportionate to the velocity of the trend change. Remember slope, y equals mx plus b? We're looking at the m right now. So the degree of steepness of the line. Also, the RSI's distance moved is proportional to the move's magnitude. So if it's increasing in levels, obviously there's a stronger price movement on the chart. These are the three basic principles, and these apply to all RSI interpretations. What I want you guys to to take away though is right here at the bottom. When the price increases rapidly, the security is overbought. When the price decreases rapidly, the security is oversold. Do you need a minute? Just write it down, pause, record it, say it a couple times, yeah, memorize it, whatever. So let's take a look at the three principles in action, level, slope, and distance. This is the chart I just pulled off for Penn National Gaming. I thought it was interesting to take a look at it because it's had a very meteoric rise here. This is just since November. November, we were down around $50 a share right now we're sitting at 130.47. So I just want to take a look at a couple of key moments in this. So we've got level, slope, and distance. Typically RSI charts are above or below the price action chart. We've got the RSI above right here. The dotted line here, this is our 50 level, and then you can see our 30 and our 70. Most of the action is between the 50 and the 70 here. When you see something like that, that means overall the level is bullish. This is a bullish movement. I could tell you right away, just looking at this RSI without seeing this chart, because because the line is fluctuating between the 70 so much, most likely this price is increasing. If somebody shows me the RSI, I can make that assertion. So can you. If it's spending the bulk of the time between the 50 and the 70, the price is increasing. The contraindication then, the opposite of that would be if it's between the 50 and the 30 most of the time, price is probably decreasing. So that's our level. Slope. Let's take a look right here. You could see a slope change. We had a gradual down slope and then a sharp up slope. Look at the price action this corresponds with. We had a gradual move down and then one, two, three days, we ended up having like a 20% climb in stock price. So look at the slope here. It's a very sharp slope. And the last one is distance. The distance moved in the Y direction is proportional to the magnitude of the change, the magnitude of the price change. So what do overbought and oversold RSIs look like? This is the takeaway. Go ahead and freeze frame this slide. Right here, we've got on this one, our RSI is below the price action chart, same difference. So here we have the 50 in the middle, and this is the 70. 70 lines. We have the RSI crossing above the 70. And as soon as it does that, it dips back under. Now what's the price action? Immediately afterwards, we've got a rise and this was predictive of the drop in price. So we entered overbought territory and immediately exited overbought territory. Typically it's not this clean with RSIs. Obviously this is just a clear example, but you get the idea. Now over here, we've got oversold below 30. It dips underneath the 30, rises immediately back up. And you could see immediately following it, immediately thereafter, we have a price reversal into the positive direction. This is what I was saying. The RSI can be slightly predictive. Walrus, is there more we should know? Hell yeah, there is. There's a ton more you should know, but I'm not going to cover it in this video. Like I said, there's textbooks on RSI. So if you want to go hard in the paint, go get some of those textbooks, check it out. Start with Wilder's 1978 book and go from there. Some of the main points that I would suggest specifically look at RSI divergence. Look at Andrew Cardwell's observations on
on uptrend and downtrend ranges in bull and bear markets and take a look at RSI swing rejections. Swing rejections are like a four stage pattern. They're really hard to identify, but they are very strong to include in your TA. So what are the limitations of RSI? Seems like a pretty great measure, right? Well, it's most reliable in long-term trends. Just like the moving averages, you need to have a long-term trend for the RSI to really shine. True reverse signals are rare and you get a ton of false positives and false negatives. And this is the one where it's a little weird. The RSI can be predictive, but it ends up lying to you a lot. There's way more false positives and false negatives on the RSI than there are true reversals because typically stock prices move based on external conditions. And this is, in my mind, the big flaw with TA. I think TA is useful for price identification, but as far as a predictive measure in its own right, I don't really like it. It's good to have the knowledge. Securities can remain in overbought or oversold territories for extended periods of time if there is substantial external momentum like news or overall market conditions. And this is one of my other favorite quotes about investing. Markets can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. If a security is in oversold territory, just because you identify that and buy in doesn't mean that it's going to reverse and go back up. It might stay in oversold territory. It might drop even lower. There's external conditions at play here. What's the takeaway? There was a really, really cool study by American Sedeva in 2017. They looked at some economic indicators, including the RSI on its own. It loses out over time to buy and hold, despite it being a good indicator that does give its own good results. Investing is not hard. Monkey buy stock, monkey hold stock, monkey get rich. We use the RSI in conjunction with other indicators like the moving averages, like the MACD. We'll cover the MACD in the next video. RSIs really aren't too useful on their own. And the last one, just stressing this, this should not be the sole basis of your trade. The RSI is meant to be a tool in your toolkit, not the only indication that you use to execute a trade. If you're ignoring everything else and you see the RSI entered overbought territory, do not just sell it based on the RSI. You need to look at the news. You need to look at other fundamentals. You need to look at other technicals before you make that decision. Never use the RSI on its own. Remember, all TA is meant to be used in conjunction with other TA. It's meant to be a step in the confirmation of your decision, not the whole confirmation on its own. That's it. Go forth my potatoes and potate a plenty. If you're new to investing, please check out my Weeble referral link below the video. If you sign up for an account and deposit $100, you get some free stock. I get some free stock. Everybody wins. I am in the Weeble partner program. So the free stock I'm getting is worth $30 or more. I appreciate it very much. For everybody else, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you want to be alerted to all my content as soon as it goes live, make sure you hit that notification bell. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot.